What's up guys, Dodgers Randy here for your weekly update as well as today's game recap. Um, things are a little bit different with a noon game and me leaving for spring training tomorrow. So I decided to just put the two videos together. Usually it won't be like this. Um, <clears throat> just what works best and easiest for me today. So if you don't care about the weekly update, you can fast forward. We do have a lot to talk about. So you can fast forward or you can listen or I, it's up to you. I don't care. But anyways, um, let's get into it. Got a lot to talk about, a lot of good stuff to talk about, a lot of updates. Um, but really quickly, as always, do me a favor, hit that subscribe button. And if you like the video, hit that like button. I appreciate it. Um, and then as I'm always going to do my best to remember, but I'm going to pin a question at the bottom. So if you guys have any questions you want answered for next week update, update go ahead and comment under the pinned comment on this video and I will make sure to get back to you as long as I can answer the question do any research anything like that I'll go ahead and get the answer for you um, we did have a subscriber question from last week that I'm going to answer it's by think blue dodger so that's coming up in just a second uh, but really quickly before we get into anything um, I want to give my condolences to Jaime Harin's family today he unfortunately lost his wife this morning to a heart attack. It's terrible, devastating news. I believe she was only 83 years old, um, said family was visiting. So that's just, it's heartbreaking. I feel so bad for Jaime and even his son having to deal with that right now. Um, our Spanish broadcaster who's been around for, I think it's now 60 60 plus years that much I do know he's been around forever um staple to this team to the community of Los Angeles especially the Spanish speaking um so my heart goes out to him and his family having to deal with that today um it's it's been a tough last kind of week week and a half for the Dodgers community so um prayers out to you guys and I hope his family is able to be there for each other and get through this uh but other than that let's move on to some baseball stuff. Um, really quickly, I'm not going to go into these things for very long. I just, I've got to talk about them. Harper signed with the Phillies. I'm sure everybody knows that by the time they see this video, but it matters because the Dodgers were in talks. Apparently the Dodgers were not willing to offer as many years. He ended up signing 13 years with no opt out, which means he's stuck with the Phillies unless he waves a trade, $330 million. It's the largest contract uh, in baseball, beat out Stanton's by $5 million. To me, that's insane. I would not have wanted the Dodgers to offer that. Everybody has their different opinion. Um, clearly, he wanted that large contract in the long years of commitment with the team because it was reported that apparently the Dodgers were willing to do a huge AAV, more a year, more money a year, just less years. Um, Boris had commented that they had even talked to a team that was willing to give him 45 million a year. I think that was the Dodgers because apparently the Giants offered him uh, 12, 12 years around 300 million as well. So he made his choice, not our problem anymore. We don't have to worry about it. I'm happy it's over with. We're still gonna be the better team. Uh, so just that one. This one, another signing happened in the NL West or an extension I to say. This one's a bummer to me. Uh, Nolan Arenado signed in eight year, technically seven year extension with the Rockies. Um, they had him this year. So the extension is eight years, but it's really seven on top of what he was already gonna be doing for them. I'm happy for him. He deserves the money. I wanted him on our team. He's my favorite non-Dodger. Um, I do think he has an opt out in three years, so you never know what'll happen, but I think he's staying in uh, Colorado. So that's it outside of Dodger stuff. And now to jump in really quickly, the subscriber question from last week was, who do you think is going to be our leadoff hitter, Taylor or Pollock? And would I like to see less plat platooning? First, I actually don't think Taylor's gonna be our leadoff hitter at all. Um, a lot of strikeouts last year. Some people that doesn't matter. I don't want a guy at the top of the lineup who's constantly striking out. I want someone who's going to put up good at bats, uh, see the ball, walk, whatever it may be, find a way to get on base. He does get on base. Don't get me wrong, but I don't see him being our leadoff hitter anymore. Um, in my opinion, it's a hundred percent going to be Pollock. He's been hitting leadoff in the spring training games, even in the same games Taylor has been in. I have not seen Taylor lead off. <clears throat> My other opinion before Pollock was even signed was actually Alex Verdugo. Um, and when, uh, with us not signing Harper, obviously he's staying, at least for now. We never know what's going to happen in the future. I would like to see him at the top of the lineup. He's a great uh, contact hitter. 
Like I had mentioned in yesterday's game recap, don't think he struck out yet in spring training. He puts up good at bats. He is not your typical uh, power hitting outfielder, but he finds a way to get on and he's got, he's not the quickest, but he's got a little bit of speed. He's really smart on the base paths. Um, so I think it'd be interesting to see him up there as well. That's just my opinion. Uh, but I do think the Dodgers are going to go with Pollock. And then as for the platooning, we are going to see a lot less of it that much, I guarantee. Roberts has already talked about it. Last year, the team was just too inconsistent with Bellinger not hitting lefties, no Seager, um, Puig couldn't hit lefties, Grandal couldn't hit righties. It was just all over the place. Um, that's not going to be happening this year. In my mind, the only guys who really get platooned might be Jock and Verdugo with him. Not that Verdugo deserves to be platooned. He hit around 400 in the minor leagues against lefties, but Jock crushes righties, so I don't know how they'll do that. Um, and then Taylor and Kike, I think, will be platooned. Other than that, I honestly don't see much platoon happening. Oh, maybe Muncie and Freeze, because um, you got to get Freeze in there against lefties. I guess they could put Muncie at second, though. But I really don't see much platooning happening. You're not platooning Turner. You're not platooning Bellinger this year. Um, they don't want to platoon Bellinger. They want him in there every day as long as he is not struggling and the team is fighting to get into the playoffs like they were last year. I think he'll be in there every single day. Um, yeah, so you're not going to platoon them. You're not going to platoon the catchers. They're both right-handed. Doesn't matter. You're not platooning Pollock. Uh, so I just I don't see it being that much of an issue. So I don't think people need to stress too much about that this year. It's all about consistency. If our guys can hit, they'll be in there. If they're struggling, whether it's against the lefty, righty, they're not going to be in there. I get you want your guys in there every day. But at the same time, when you're fighting to get into the playoffs and you have a month or two left to get in and Bellinger is hitting 205, 210 against lefties all season, you're not going to leave him in the lineup and risk that at bat when you have to win. So that's my opinion. That is it. Now let's jump into the good stuff. I've got some good updates today on Kershaw. Good news. Um, same with Urias, Seeger, all that good stuff. So let's get into it. Um, as always, the what I'm going to be reading from right now are all tweets from Ken Gurnick, Jorge Castillo, Bill Plunkett, Alana Rizzo, Pedro Mora, and Mike D. Giovanna. They're either writers, work for the team, uh, reporters, whatever it may be. This is all stuff that they have gotten from Roberts at spring training or Friedman, whoever they're talking to. So let's start with some Kershaw updates because I know everyone's freaking out about that. So he did play catch with Bueller on Monday. It was the first time he had thrown since his bullpen on Wednesday. Um, but when he came out of it, Robert said he didn't feel good after playing catch. He was worried, said the situation is not ideal, shoulder discomfort, and that they had yet to schedule an MRI. So basically everyone was freaking out on Monday. A lot of pain, wasn't feeling, not a lot of pain, but even Honeycutt had noticed prior to that that he just wasn't looking like himself. Um, however, he did throw today. He threw for five minutes, about 25 throws. And according to one of the reporters, he was throwing a little bit harder than he did on Monday. Another great sign. Uh, Friedman did say it went pretty well. So again, if there's no complaints or they say they're not worried or we have to take a day off, then I'm happy. Um, we just want to keep him moving in the right direction. No need to rush, push it. Um, would love to see him out there on opening day, but I want to see him out there in the playoffs healthy, even more ready to go. Um, so for now, he still remains day to day. Friedman says the condition does not really call for an MRI right now, that they had him get an MRI when he signed in November and that uh, things are trending in the right direction and said he's doing better than last time, which I'm assuming he's talking about uh, the... MRI from back in November. So all great news. If they don't think he needs an MRI, then it most likely means it's not anything severe, which is what we want. So they didn't say when he would be doing his next bullpen, playing catch, any of that. He only played catch for five minutes today. So they probably want to see how he feels tomorrow, any soreness, and then they'll go from there. Um, but I'm still thinking it's going to be a little while before we even get close to seeing him in a game. Um, as for Seager, he was actually making throws from shortstop across the diamond for the first time on Saturday. Um, that was his kind of his last biggest hurdle was being able to throw across the entire diamond from shortstop to first base. And he got out and he got over that hurdle. He's done it again since then. Um, apparently from everything I've read, he's looking great, still no setbacks. So that is huge. Um, throwing was going to be the biggest issue. I think more than anything, 
just to make sure his arm was holding up well and he was feeling all right. So awesome news, super happy for that. Um, he did take his first swings against live BP on Tuesday facing Baez and he said he came out of it feeling fine. So more great news on that end of things. Um, a healthy Corey Seager to me is the key piece to what we need to win a World Series this year. He wasn't healthy in 2017's World Series, didn't get to play in last year's. So I really do think he's a key piece. Um, this might be a bold prediction, but if he stays healthy, I could see him coming out and having an MVP type season. Same thing with Turner. So kind of when you, when you have two players on your team who kind of both can be MVP, you tend to take votes from one or another. So they may not win it, but I could see them putting up MVP type numbers. Um, Roberts did say that Seager could play in a minor league game as early as next week. Um, however, remember, they did say that it's 50 to 60 at bats, most likely before he's playing in a big league spring training game. But the good thing about minor league spring training games is obviously they don't count. They're out there to help guys get the feeling. So what the Dodgers can do is they can have Seager bat at the top of the lineup every inning. So they could have him go out there for a nine. I'm assuming they're nine inning games. I don't know how long they are. They could have him out there and they could have him get nine, nine at bats in that game. Um, and then you've only got to go through four, five more games, not even. No, not even. I, I, I suck at math, but you get the point. They can have him in the lineup as much as possible um, at the top of the lineup every inning. So that's awesome news. Things still seem to be going in the right way for him. Happy for that. Um, another one, well, more of our young guys, all of our young guys. Um, Bueller, he won't be making his Cactus League debut this week as of this was said the other day, so this week, meaning we at least will not see him till Sunday, and even then, I don't think that's happening. I think they'll push it back a little bit more. They're still slow playing him after last year's workload. Again, he threw 177 combined innings between the minor leagues, playoffs, and the regular season with the Dodgers um, in 2018. In 2017, he had only thrown 100 pitches, so... They're going to let him go. They don't plan on giving him an innings limit, but they're not trying to have him do too much in spring training. Um, so that way he's good to go when season starts. And that's about it. Bueller wants to throw 200 innings. He's very stubborn, I can tell, just like Kershaw. I mean, he went out there and did pitch a game with a fractured rib. So um, <laughs> I've got no worries about him. I'm not stressing out about this. I just, I think they just don't they know how good he is. They know he can get out there and that if they only give him one or two starts, that should be enough. Um, so I'm not stressing out on that. Uh, Cody Bellinger did get his first start on Tuesday. He was dealing with a sore back. Uh, great. He did get a home run today. So everything seems to be looking good there for him. Um, haven't heard any complaints. I think the sore back is completely over with. Maybe just slept wrong. Who knows? Doesn't sound like anything serious because he's back in the lineup now two days in a row. Today's Thursday. Did he play? Played Tuesday. Maybe he didn't play yesterday. Anyways, um, he's played at least two games. So great news there. Um, more news on Urias. He had his first spring training game yesterday. He impressed everybody. I'm really bummed I didn't get to see it because I heard he looked incredible out there. Really wish I would have been able to see the game, but couldn't. Um, Roberts is still leaving the door open for him to make the big league roster. Coming into spring training, I don't think anyone saw that happening, but now potentially with Kershaw being hurt and Urias looking so good, I don't think they want to pull the plug right now and say, okay, you we're just going to start you in the minor leagues. We're starting you in the bullpen, whatever it is. They're giving him a shot. Um, so Roberts did say the door is open for him and that it's, he, it's right now he's just got to earn it, which I think he's shown he can. So as long as he stays to look good, who knows? We might see him in the rotation to start the season, which would be pretty cool as well. Um, yesterday when he was pitching, his fastball was hitting between 94 and 97. So that's great. Um, after he had his surgery last year. So more great news on him. Um, Kenley Jansen will be making his spring training debut on Sunday. So that's great news. Um, a lot of the relief pitchers are just starting to get into their games the last game or two. So doesn't, I don't think there's anything wrong with Jansen. I just think that they're kind of not rushing him out there because there's no need. Um, last year he didn't do spring training at all. So He'll be out there on Sunday, which is a good start. He'll be able to get in as many games as they need him to and be ready to go. Um, more news on, to well, not more news, I guess. Um, 
Team still doesn't know when Tolls will be reporting to spring training. They said he's still dealing with a personal matter. So as of now, we still don't know when he will be uh, with the Dodgers. So we'll still have to kind of see what happens there. It does open up the door for Verdugo and Jock to get more playing time. So hopefully they can go out there and have strong springs. Um, and whatever's going on with Tolls, I hope him and his family are okay. And I hope we get to see him out here sooner rather than later because he's had a tough past couple years in baseball and he he deserves his shot out there um but other than that that's really it for the weekly update uh Ryu and Stripling will be pitching tomorrow's game split squad uh Indians and Padres I believe so I think Ryu is the Padres I think Stripling's the Indians but the game should be on TV so if you guys want to check well Sportsnet I should say sorry um sportsnet la be on tv so if you guys want to watch that you can one of them will one of them won't i don't know which one will you'll have to figure that one out when you turn it on but other than that for those of you who don't care about the game recap that's it for today um as for the weekly update but let's jump into the game recap because i know some more people should have been able to see this one apparently you could get it through the mlb app mine wasn't letting me log in so i couldn't watch it i heard it wasn't blacked out so i'm a little bummed i couldn't get it to pop up on my screen but it is what it is um dodgers finished the game in a 7-7 tie there are no extra innings in spring training um hill made his second start of the season today or of the sp of spring training today he went two in a third innings, he gave up two hits, two runs, but no earned runs, and he had two strikeouts. In the first inning, uh, Taylor had an error, which uh, got a guy on base, obviously, and then they have Daniel Murphy on their team now, and we know it sucks to go up against him. But anyways, he singled, and then Hill hit a guy, and then uh, just a ground ball out happened to get them a run, and then a sack fly. So um, it does sound like Hill did fine. He did great. He just unfortunately that error by Taylor allowed the first guy to get on and then uh him hitting one of their guys also allowed him to move over so the sack fly and the ground out allowed a run to come in but other than that he seems to be doing well I'm not worried about it um I think he just had one bad inning with the hitting the guy um but other than that sounds like he had a pretty good day uh he went into the third inning got a strikeout then they pulled him they wanted him to throw about 30 pitches, so that's where he uh, he ended his day at. So happy for him. Glad he's still out there doing well. Um, hopefully it keeps going. Then they brought in the pitcher by Michael Boyles. Not sure who he is. Uh, he got an out, and then he faced Desmond, gave up a home run. So the Rockies ended up taking uh, the lead again there. But really, overall, I think things with pitching, um, really the only notable things is Joe Kelly made his debut. He did struggle out there, uh, had two wild pitches, two walks, and he gave up a single. So he struggled a little bit, but he got out of it without giving up the one run. Um, it's spring training. He's got to get out there. If he sucks, I'd rather him figure it out now so Honeycutt and the catchers and whoever else can help work with him. Um, he did not have a great day. Luis Vasquez came in, one, two, three inning. Um, Tony Singrani made his spring training debut, another relief pitcher we'll finally get to see. Dealt with injury a lot last year. Um, so I hope he stays healthy because when we had him in 17, he was pretty solid for us. I think our bullpen's going to be really good this year. Um, he had two strikeouts, then gave up a double, but then got out of the inning, never came around. Josh Fields, same thing, came in for his debut, um, one, two, three inning, one strikeout. JT Chargois struggled. Um, he came in, gave up a triple, a home run, but then he got an out and finished the inning with two strikeouts. So overall, pitching did pretty well today, um, minus a couple things from Chargois and Kelly, but starting pitching did well, and... We'll kind of see how we go from there. Not sure if Chargois will make the uh, big league roster. We will see. I kind of feel like he might be a guy that starts in AAA just because we have so many arms right now. Um, and then moving on to the offense, Pollock just keeps doing what he's doing, killing it out there, lead off single to start the game. And then, of course, Turner. I I don't even know what to expect at this point anymore when he goes up to the plate. Like, I just expect a, I mean, I do know what to expect. But it's like every time he goes up there, you know he's going to do something. Um, he doubled. Muncie grounded out, brought home a run. Bellinger had a sack fly. Game was all tied up in the first inning. So another game scoring in the first inning. 
what we need. Turner went two for two, or yeah, Turner went two for two on the day or to start the game out, a uh, double single. Uh, Muncie got his first hit of spring training. Freese was out there, walked. Taylor doubled. Um, Bellinger had his home run in the fifth inning. Uh, so happy to see him with that. Uh, Muncie had a better day. Like I said, he had a walk, a double, an RBI, got out, the, got out once, and they had actually said he was robbed of the hit. So he could have had a pretty good day. He did have a good day either way, but even better than that. Um, anytime you get robbed from a hit, you can't really use that against the player. That's not on them. Um, but like I said, Bellinger had his home run. And then other than that, that was really it. The rest of it was all minor leaguer guys. The game ended in the seven, seven tie, like I mentioned. So that's really it. Um, I, 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 I wish I could watch it. Then I, <laughs> I, I say this every day and luckily that problem will end tomorrow. I will be at the game. I, I think I'll be at the game. I'll be in Arizona tomorrow. I don't know what my plan is yet. Don't really want to spend money on the ticket. So we will see. Um, don't know which game I will be at. However, I'm not going to do a game recap on both. I will only do a game recap of the game I am at. And then I'll be at spring training five days. I'll come home Wednesday or Thursday. So every day I'm out there, I'll be having a video letting you guys know what's going on. Um, and then I'll, we'll have what, three weeks? No, we're a month away from spring, a month away from opening day. So when I get back, we'll be at three weeks and then we're almost there guys. So we just got to hold on a little bit longer. Um, Keep this up, keep winning, and see how this season goes. I'm feeling good so far about this team. Really enjoying it. Really enjoying Pollock's pickup. Um, just can't wait to see Seeger out there. That's going to be a big one for me. But other than that, not going to waste your time anymore. Thank you for your support and watching the video, especially if you made it this far. It means the world to me. Um, don't forget to hit that subscribe button, please. If you made it this far, I... I think you kind of liked the video. But other than that, have a great day, guys. And I'll catch you guys tomorrow when I'm in Arizona. Bye, guys.